Welcome to Iron Sore and Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. This is episode nine. Last episode, Carl had returned defeated from Bremen to Targos and bumped into a dog who led him to a friendly man, Keegan, who told him a tale of his partner escorting two girls who matched the descriptions for Bridget and Tessa up to the peak of Kelvin's Cairn. So this is a fantastic lead. Carl got his best friend half, told half that Tessa and Bridget were probably on Kelvin's Cairn or at least somewhere along that route. And the two of them set off. They went through Bryn Shander and there tried to get some supplies. Talking to some dwarves from the Dwarven Valley, the dwarves told them a tale of being attacked by a Yeti and their iron ingots being left on a sled in the tundra. So Carl and half went after those iron ingots, encountered some wolves on the way and also encountered a kind of naturalist, Dazan, who asked them to find a couple of little elementals, which they did successfully. Then they pressed on, found the iron ingots, encountered a bunch of goblins, fought with the goblins, drove them off, scattered the iron ingots all over the place, but they managed to put them back on the sled and get them back to Bryn Shander, handing them over to the dwarves. The dwarves equipped them, and now they are ready to head out on the road to Care Dineval and then to Care Koenig. So I've made this task a dangerous task for them to undertake. So we are going to start with them undertaking a journey. But before we do that, Carl is actually really quite hurt. He helped out these dwarves. So I think he's going to try to make a bond with the dwarves. They did say that the friendship of the dwarves was helpful. So he's going to try to form a bond with them. And now Half is going to talk him up and help him hopefully do better on this. So on a weak hit, the dwarves ask something more. Let's ask the Oracle what that is. I think that what the dwarves are going to ask the characters to do is they're already heading to Caradineval and the dwarves have some trades with the folk of Caradineval, but they haven't heard anything from them for a couple of weeks. So the dwarves ask if Carl and Half can investigate Caradineval and then come and tell them what's going on. So that's fine. It's more or less on their route. So Carl's going to swear an iron vow to tell the dwarves what the situation at Caradineval is. And only then he'll be able to mark the bond. So, all right, that's fine. Not the end of the world, but he is injured. So we've got to heal up a little bit here before we get on our way. Oh no, on a miss, your aid is ineffective. Pay the price. I think the price is that he uses up some of his supplies, which is not good without helping him. He's got to, he's got to try it again. He's got to heal up. All right, strong hit, great, plus two health. And I think while they're still in Bryn Shander, they're going to try to resupply because they know that once they're out in the tundra, it's going to be rough. All right, take up to plus two supply, but minus one momentum for each. Fine. And now they're going to camp and rest up just a little bit more before they leave Bryn Shander. Good. Now they're rested up. They're healed up. They've got their supplies. Not a lot of momentum, but they're going to go ahead and undertake a journey. This is a dangerous journey. Carl's got his woods, uh, his wayfinder, so that's going to benefit. All right, on a weak hit, reach a waypoint, but mark off a supply. Heading down the east way in the direction of Caradineval, Carl and half hiking along. They probably don't see too many other travelers on the road here, but every now and then probably pass a caravan or something uh, that's going between the towns. They settle in, have a camp, have a little bit of a rest, and then set out the next day. All right, another weak hit on Undertake a Journey. So they're still making progress, which is good. Their supplies are getting a little bit low, not too surprising crossing this icy tundra, but that's okay. They're doing, doing reasonably well. A strong hit on their next leg, which is fantastic. So they can mark progress without worrying about their supplies. Another strong hit. They are doing really well. Good thing they took the road. There was the possibility to cross country towards Care. Koenig, but they decided to take the road and take it the easy way. I could roll now. I've got eight boxes filled, but I'd like to be as sure as possible. And there's potential for adventure out here. So we're going to undertake another journey one more time. All right, before Carl and Half roll into town here, I think that we're going to try to secure an advantage, maybe scope the town out a little bit on a strong hit. That's great. We'll take the momentum. 
and we will have a bonus coming into town. We'll do our last Undertake a Journey, and that's a strong hit. So we've got all of our boxes filled. Let's go ahead and reach our destination. Take the plus one momentum. So Carl and Half successfully journeyed to Care Dineval without incident. You know, sometimes that happens. Not very commonly in Iron Sorn, but every now and then you get lucky. So Care Dineval is primarily marked by the castle, which is still intact and serves as the speaker's main residence. And as Carl and Half approach the town, they did do a secured advantage, so they've got some idea of what's going on here. They don't really see a whole lot of people out and about, but there are a couple of guys that are on the road leading into town. Looks like they're mostly just kind of sitting there bundled up, looking bored. But as Carl and Half approach, they stand up and kind of accost him. And Carl's like, oh, hello, um, we're, we're headed off to Care Koenig. Uh, may we rest the night here? And the two kind of look at each other and they're like, you can come on in. Why don't you head to the uphill climb and uh, stay a while? Carl's like, okay, that's good. Doesn't know what these guys are thinking. They seem a little bit sketchy, but whatever. He's going to carry on. So the two of them head up the hill to the uphill climb. Kerr Dineval's primary feature being the castle and the uphill climb is just a little bit underneath that. Carl and Half head in to the inn and tavern and look around and there's not too many people here. It's actually surprisingly quiet given the time of day. I think they would have expected at least a few more folks given that Kerr Dineval is not, you know, a super tiny town. The proprietor raises a hand and waves them over. Two of them kind of head over to the bar, sit down. The fellow looks at the two of them, says, you new in town? They're all like, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we're passing through to uh, Kerr Koenig. We're trying to find some people that went up to the mountain. I don't suppose they passed through here, did they? And he's going to try to do a gather information. Great. That's a strong hit. So this fellow, Rourke, who's the proprietor, uh, nods his head. He's like, yeah, I seem to remember a couple of lasses coming through. They, uh, they were escorted by a burly fellow and said they were going up to the mountain. Didn't uh, ask them about their business much, but of course that was before all of our troubles started. That sounds like a problem. So Carl nods and says, um, what, uh, what troubles? Uh, we, there were a couple of folks when we came into town. They, they seemed welcoming enough. Rourke shrugs and, and chuckles and says, I, yeah, they, they would seem welcoming enough, but uh, they're letting folks come in, but they ain't letting nobody leave. Carl's like, well, but we got we got to go. We're, we can't stay here. We got to look for our sisters. Rourke shakes his head. Oh, I'm sorry, boys. I don't think you'll be going anywhere. It's the uh, cult of Arl, you see. The cult children of Arl, I suppose they tell they call themselves Dark Days, Dark Days. This group calls themselves the Knights of the Black Sword. And uh, they basically take over the town here. See, they um, set up in the, the care and took over the speaker and they ain't letting nobody go. I think they're getting ready to do a convert or die sort of thing. Carl's alarmed. What? What? What is the cult of Arl? I haven't heard of this. Rourke nods. Says, hey, yeah, they're new. They formed and trying to get up to doing sacrifices to Oral. I reckon soon they'll be doing human sacrifice. That's kind of what uh, the word is on the street here. But uh, sorry, boys, you ain't going to be able to go. Carl and Half kind of defeated. They uh, get some food and go and sit down and they have a, a quick whispered conversation. Carl's like, Half, what can we do? You think we can sneak out? And Half is like, I'm I'm sure that people have tried to sneak out, right, Carl? But I mean, they've got to have guards posted or something. And I don't know if we want to go going off into the tundra by ourselves. I mean, we probably should follow the road and they're probably watching the road. Or I was like, okay, well, I guess this town's problem has now become our problem. Half nods, the two of them grab the uh, steel mugs that they're holding and swear an iron vow to rid Cairdinaval of this menace. Okay, rid Cairdinaval of the Knights of the Black Sword. This is going to be a tough one. There's a lot of these guys, and they're holed up in a castle. So I think we're going to give this a formidable rank. While Carl and Half were hiking from Bryn Shander to Cairdinaval, they also had some conversations about Bridget and Tessa. Carl ended up swearing to Half that he would help return Tessa to Lonelywood. So he has two separate vows now. 
to save his sister and to help half save Tessa. So he's uh, piling on the vows here. All right, so they swear to rid Kier Denival of the knights and that's going to be uh that's going to be a tough one. I think they need to go out and kind of scope around the care and just see what it looks like. So they're going to have a, a little bit of a restful meal and then head out. They look at the uh the castle. It looks like there are a couple of guards at the front gate. So getting in that way may be tough unless they want to try to con their way in or something. It might be able to do that. It's not really their strong suit, though. They could attack the guards. I mean, if they're trying to rid them of the knights, they could just, you know, lay into them. I suppose, you know, starting off a fight too early may not be the best thing. Could they rally some of the townsfolk to help them root out the guards? That might be the best thing to do. That's going to require them to forge a bond with these people, though. I don't think that they're just going to willy-nilly do whatever is asked. But first, let's roll to swear our Iron Vow at the outset of this quest. All right, that's a weak hit, which gives us a little momentum. And not surprising, we don't exactly know what we need to do. So I think that we're going to try to secure an advantage by talking to people and then eventually try to forge a bond here. I think that we've got to get some of these townsfolk involved. Half is the chatty, friendly one, so Carl's going to kind of leave things up to him, but he's going to also help out, so secure an advantage. That's a miss and a double zero, which is the worst result you could possibly get, which means that the two of them go around town talking to people, being like, hey, so this cult, like, these are kind of bad guys, right? And you know what? I think since it's a match, which is a critical fail, they unknowingly run into some townsfolk who are also children of Arl, and they report to the care, hey, these couple of newcomers are looking to cause some trouble. So the care is going to dispatch a troop of their guards to go ahead and arrest the two of them. Now, as written, the quest in Care Denevel revolves around the Knights of the Black Sword, who worship uh, one of the devils, Levistus. I could run it that way, but I like the idea of having the villains in the game more tied in together. So having the overarching villains being the children of Arl and Revison and Suffolk Caltro and a lot of the other villains in the first two chapters being wrapped up with this cult. Carl and Half get beset by this patrol. They're kind of walking around town trying to talk to people. And a bunch of these folks come out from the care and they kind of accost them. They circle around. They're like, hey, we heard you're poking around where you shouldn't be poking. Now, you're going to come friendly or not? And I think Carl and Half look at each other. And I mean, they were going to throw down with these people anyway. So I think the answer is no, we're not going to come friendly. Enter the fray. Now, there's a bunch of these folks, but I think that they're probably not necessarily trained warriors, right? They're primarily normal people that have been uh, participants in this uh, cult slash religion. So I think that they are thinking that there's enough of them that it's not going to be trouble, but I'm going to give this a dangerous uh, level. That's a weak hit for Enter the Fray, not bad. I think we're going to go ahead and take the initiative so that we can start off and try to keep them on their heels. So Half and Carl look at each other, Half raises his spear, Carl whips out his ax and just hatchets right into one of the guys next to him. All right, he uh, manages to hit that one, reverses the grip, tries to cut into another and they scamper out of the way. So he does inflict harm, but then they lose initiative. Now all of the others charge in. Uh, they've got like knives and clubs, like pretty primitive weapons, but you know, there's enough of them and they can definitely hurt the two of them. Uh, that is a miss. Uh, we are totally outmatched. We thought we would get the drop on them. We got a couple of good hits in, but now they're swarming us and we're going to have to pay the price. I think the most obvious is that they take injury and then on the indoor harm, also a miss. So losing some momentum here. Yeah, the, these cultists are just swarming around, beating on them. They're trying to fight them off and just really struggling. So we're going to clash again. Strong hit on a clash. So we inflict our harm. I'm going to take the option to do additional harm, and we're going to try to end this fight. 
that is a strong hit. Fantastic. So I think that the uh, patrol, Carl and half have just absolutely laid into them. Initially had a little bit of a hard time, but then turned around and started whacking away. And the patrol is all unconscious, bleeding out, injured around the snow. Carl and half kind of look at each other like, well, I guess we're in it now. That's going to give us some progress on ridding care Dineval of the knights. And that's a formidable quest. So that's going to take us some time. So, well, the next step is really to head up to the care. So I think they're they're doing okay. Carl's a little bit hurt. I think he's going to try to heal himself here. Try to bind his wounds a little bit. Oh, God. That's a miss. Aid is ineffective. Pay the price. That's a 74. It's stressful. Yeah, this always happens. He tries to heal himself. I don't think he's made a single heal check on the first go. But he's got to try to do it because he's still hurting. And if they're going to charge in, all right, great. Strong hit. If they're going to charge in, there's no way he's going to make it if he's uh, feeling that hurt. But I think that they're going to try to secure an advantage. I think that they're going to try to sneak up on these gate guards. Carl has his bow. He can pepper them with arrows. Half can throw his spear. So I think they're going to try to ambush these gate guards and secure an advantage uh, in doing so. Hey, that's a strong hit. I'll take the two momentum, and then I'm going to take a plus one when we enter the fray and ambush these guys. Okay, a weak hit on enter the fray. We're going to go ahead and take initiative because we are ambushing them. So we fire off some arrows, half throws his spear. Okay, I can't take a miss on this ambush. So I'm going to go ahead and burn momentum and get at least a weak hit at least get to inflict our harm. Uh, I think I'm going to say these folks are troublesome. There's only two of them, so it's not the end of the world. Half spear goes completely off track, and now they're just going to go and rush the two guards. Carl's at least got his axe. Half doesn't have anything, so he's just going to bare knuckle it. On a weak hit, okay, but then Carl gets a little bit injured, gets rocked back on his heels, just not doing well. All right, we're going to try to turn the tide here. Risk it all on a strike. That's a strong hit. Fantastic. Now we can end the fight. A weak hit. So I think that what happens is half gets a little bit injured. Closing to melee with these gate guards. Still doing okay, but not great. So now they've taken over the gate guards. They've bowled in, and now they can start getting into the care and rooting out the knights and we will call it there and next time see how carl and half fare cruising around the castle here hopefully they'll find some more allies because i don't think that they can go fight all of these children of arl by themselves i think that they're going to need some help and hopefully they'll find some thanks for watching